G'day guys, Calvin, Cartoon Company, down under New Zealand. Hey, I normally do one UZ, but today we're working on a G4X on a one UZ. So I'm still doing one UZ. I just did a little video because the owner thought that the timing was wrong. It wasn't wrong, it was working as it should, and it was just a little bit, a little bit of lack of knowledge on his behalf. So I've just done that video and explained that. But I want to set up some logging for this particular job. And that allows to monitor stuff. I don't know whether the logging is set up in his ECU. It's been 40 odd emails back and forth sorting stuff out. It wasn't a job I wired, but it's kind of a mate of mine who I work with in the States a bit. He does a few looms. Um, and so we're just working through and getting it sorted. My mate's had a bit of a tough time, so I don't mind helping him out. And this helps everyone. So let's get in and have a bit of a look. If you want a bit of a backstory, watch the timing out is out video. But this one's going to look at setting up logging. So I think that's probably what the title's going to be. Haven't thought of that yet. It's going to be set up logging. When it, at the end of it, I'm going to flick this back to the owner. He's going to fire it into his uh, car. He will start it, run it, check it. And then he's going to send me back a log file. I'm just winging this, see how it gets on, we'll see what comes up. Let's get into it. So here I have the file, I've downloaded it from the email, and this is his tune profile. I probably should actually save it, so we, we go up and go um, save as. And I've got a folder specifically for tuning maps, right here. I don't know how far back his one actually goes. I'm just going to start a new folder for this. And um, we'll put it in here. Right, so last one we discussed the timing map. While, why the... When you set the timing it's different to what it actually displays because it goes onto the timing map but this time we're setting up some logging so we go up a left click on logging set up logging and pc logging would come on whenever the rpm is greater than 50 rpm and these are all the things that are getting logged ECU logging, however, is not. So we're going to just we're going to turn it on, and I'm going to have it always on. That way, I can see when it's sitting idling. Um, especially good for this, where he's doing lots of work and checking stuff out. And then I just go through and I just take things from this side and I put them onto that side. It's not running on ethanol, so I don't I don't need that stuff. So I, I'm only going to put in, in this case, the stuff that I believe I need, or I'm likely to need. Um, actually, um, one of the sayings, hey, you're better to have the, the data and not need it, than need the data and not have it. Okay, so let's put in some uh, charge temp, and we just, so we, there we go. Crank enrichment, yes, I'd like that. Um, lamb close loop, lambda trim, close loop fuel trim. Yep, I would like that one actually. And I would like acceleration. Oh, I'm going a bit backwards here, eh? Because I do want this one here. I definitely want the AFR target. I'm just going to go through looking at stuff I might need. Engine fan trim, yes. You see, I don't have ethanol temperature. Um, it's not set up on individual cylinder trims at the moment. We'll grab that. I looked through and I looked at um, the what trims are on here, what corrections are for, for timing. I didn't look at for fuel. Um, And I'm going to put idly a fuel trim correction, yes. And I do like to know the injector 
duty cycle right here and injector timing. Grab both of those. And lambda 1. We don't have 8 lambdas, so we don't need to have all the others. And by not getting that data, you're saving some of your log memory as well. Lambda average, we've only got the one wide band in it. Post data enrichment, prime fuel, grab those. And warm up enrichment. So that was pretty easy. That's the, the ones that I want. Ignition. Now I know there's no 4D, 5D. We'll grab the drip, that one there. We'll grab that one. Even though these ones, there's no ID, idle inlet air temp trims, um, I'm still going to grab it because I would like to see them turned on at some stage or when it goes to tuning. And the tuner will put it in. Addition angle and its status. Yep. Actually, what we might just do, we might just grab table two. We might just go up here. We'll grab table two, fuel table two as well. Uh, table two, launch, no, yes, yes, and I don't think we need to do the trailing split because that's kind of rotary stuff, we'll just drop these down, so I just, I just right click on the little arrow and it gets rid of those drop down menus, and setting up logging, it, there's a bit of time to do it, but it's well worth doing it properly, putting it all in, making sure that you've got as much of the information as you can. That is, oh, it's already in the list. Okay then, it's already in the list. Awesome. And when it does that, I'm just going to double check that I did get, actually get it. Map limit, yes. I don't think there's a speed limit. Now, these two, under voltage limit and voltage limit status. I wish I had have had this going the other day. I was doing some logging, and it saved me a lot of time on diagnosis, having the logging there and having those. I was watching it as it was doing it. Fuel pump status. Um, things like knowing if the fan's on, stuff like that can be really helpful when you're trying to solve problems on the engines. Um, pretty much good there. Oh, I put some stuff in. Maybe I don't, don't. Maybe won't need that. Auxiliary injector for no, we won't need that. So I put some stuff on I don't really need. I just click it back out. Easy. Uh, okay. Closed loop stepper, and I would like to grab those because idle to me is very very important on an engine. So I, I like to get that information. And then I'll set up a screen to help me out on those things. What's he got going in? I think he's only got a start input. Don't even know if he's got a start input going into this. We'll grab that one. And we'll grab that one. What's in this screen? Nope. Analog inputs is where we start to get some important information as well. So, we'll just drop that back again. Analog inputs. There is no drive-by-wire. This one is important. We'll grab that. Internal map. Um, so you can grab that and it'll give you additional information as far as voltages are concerned. Battery voltage is important. 
Those are all important. Oh, it's already in the list. I already put map sensor in the list. Oh, ECT is already on the list. Oh, that might have been some stuff that were there. Okay. Fuel pressure. Here we go. That one. Inlet air temp. Important. Map sensor. Very important. Manifold gauge pressure. Important. I'm going to put oil pressure and fuel pressure. Oh, oil pressure and oil temperature in there because I use them on other vehicles. Okay. TPS main. Yes. No, no, no. Hmm, do I want those ones? <sighs> yeah, I'll grab them now. Again, that if you're not sure, throw them on the list. And lambda. Now this he's got a lambda issue. So this might help us review what's going on with this lambda. And triggers. Triggers I find again are giving us a lot of information on what engine, what's going on. So I'm just going to grab them all. But no maths. Idle speed is next. And again, as I said, I like idle speed. I'm just going to grab it all. Electronic throttle? No. Boost control? No. Knock control? It is a monsoon, early monsoon, which I don't think is running knock control. I want to grab some ECU status. And ECU status. So I grab a couple of things in here. Um, just to see that there's nothing going on with the ECU itself. Um, very rarely on the newer ones do I have any issues. And these two. Can. Now there was, are some can issues. That is what he's having trouble getting his can set up. It's going to be a can one. Let's grab all that stuff so we can look over what his can is doing. And I don't think there's anything else happening in this particular vehicle. Hey, go away. It's pushing the wrong button. It happens. So now I've got a big long list. Of bits and pieces happening in the logging really simple done what we're going to do here now is we push OK and I can up the frequency too which actually might be a good idea for some of them um, so you can get a bit more frequency happening um, but these are already in at 50 now if you want to increase your frequency your, your logging frequency then you can do it you need to do that, set that default at the beginning, for example, and then you still can go through and change them down here. Um, let's do this one, for example. You just click on it, and you can move it up, increase it. So it depends on how quickly and what you want your sampling to do. Things like temperature that don't change really fast, you can have them a lot lower. Um, and so for this one you might want it, your map sensor, you might want it a bit higher. And that way you can get the best data. You of course can change it as you go, wrong button again, if you're up and running and you're working with the vehicle, and this is, this is part of what I do when I'm working with a race team. As I'll go through and I'll adjust this information to make it better and better, get more out of it, get the best information that I can get the whole time. Um, okay, with that saved, and it wasn't on before, 
I'm just going to save another copy of it. So I'm going to save as again. In my tuning maps, web stuff, and I'm going to go with blogging. Now he has been talking to Link, but he hasn't done a log file. So they can guide him, but getting a log file, he's going to have more information. So he can help with them too. So he is going to get a copy of that. I'll send it back to him. And then at the end, he is going to go up to here and he's going to go logging. And he's, no, sorry, he's going to go here. He's going to logging. SU log file download. I can't do it because there's no computer attached. But he can grab that log file and he can flick it to me, to link. We can look at some information. If it's not right, quite right. Now, I do also recommend that you send the present file in the vehicle at the same time. So you send a tune profile and a log file. Whoever's doing the adjusty stuff does the adjusty stuff and sends back the profile to be downloaded. Of course, keeping a copy of us along the way. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope it helps guys set up their computers better, get more knowledge, more information out of their ECUs. And this, this kind of applies to all ECUs that, that have log functions. Understand what the logging does, understand what you're trying to achieve, work out the process to get the information that you want. So I'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.